I love Toho. I also like Vocaloid, Genshin Impact, PGR, Minecraft, Monica Magica. You know, all the red flags. But before all that stuff came along to ruin my life, there was one seed that was planted inside of me that began my descent in the madness. <laughs> Angry Bird. Angry Birds was the very thing that kept me happy during my preteen years. I played almost every game, I begged my parents to buy me the plushies and the toys, I watched fan videos, I even recreated the Angry Birds with guns animation in kindergarten. Don't tell me why I thought it was a good idea, it was 2011, things were different back then. I remember watching the trailers on my old dinky iPad for the occasional new Angry Birds games every year or so, and after, play a bit of Mario Kart Wii. Two of my favorite joys as a kid. You wouldn't believe how excited, glamorized, validated I felt when Rovio released the trailer in early 2013 for the brand spankin' stinkin' new risk of a game. Angry Birds Go. Hmm, okay. Mario Kart and Angry Birds? M Mario Kart on the iPad? With Angry Bird? Y you can play as the pigs? Dude, this game is going to be... Insane. So, when the game released in November 2013, my entire world changed. It's not Mario Kart, but it has its own identity. You know those Pinewood Derby cars that we make in science class? It might be an American thing, but that's basically the entire game. You launch a cart from a slingshot down a hill toward the finish line, with the entire story following the pigs making a racing series for themselves and baking a big, juicy, yummy cake as the prize. But suddenly, the red bird and a pig with a blue hat joined forces to become the greatest kart racers in the world to win that cake. Mario himself is crapping his pants at the mere mention of this story. Beyond that, the story doesn't really matter, aside from the fact that everyone in the world is against you. Even your best friend bombed the exploding bomb bird. <laughs> Throughout the campaign, you travel across five separate terrain levels and with five separate cart disciplines. The Seed Way. Copyrights Cockroaches, some may call it. It's your typical easy, beginner first level with wide roads and shallow turns. The one bridge at the end of the first track does give me a lot of nostalgia though. Rocky Road. It's kind of like the ice cream. The roads are bumpy and filled with high jumps, so it's essentially like driving in certain parts of Los Angeles. Apparently it was the world chosen to celebrate Chinese New Year. I present to you, the Year of the Goat Cart. Run. Air. These carts are somehow flight legal? It's a place where airships reign supreme and the terrain is like that of a Minecraft amplified world. You see the swirlies in the sky? Oh, you gotta take advantage of them, or you're gonna fall to your death. <laughs> Stunt. It's the wackiest, baddest, fastest of the world, and mostly because you can produce some spectacular crashes. There are also many death-defying loops in the world. Like, look at this roller coaster. It's designed to kill you once you ride it. Now look at this. <laughs> the Angry Birds are canonically genetically modified super beings. And last but not least, Sub-Zero. It was added in a March 2014 update where it was the only snow world. And my goodness, I don't know what it is with game designers and artists, but Winter Wonderlands tend to have the most beautiful scenery, like the map that has northern lights. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. 
However, the physics are super slippery, which tends to produce some lousy races. But hey, at least one of the carts is a Simpsons reference. Old Man Winter! <laughs> also, it's a winter world. Released in spring. Wow, nice oxymoron. In each of the worlds, you'll have five sets of things to do. So let's just fire through the boring stuff. Yeah. Versus race. You'll go against three other racers to earn money. Y yippee. Time boom. It's the time trial game mode of the bunch. And... Uh, I don't know, this game mode kind of sucks. Womp womp. Ideally, time trial would be a test of speed and track knowledge with a strict time limit quota. Uh, no. You just dodge blocks. The challenge comes from not getting hit, which considering the game's physics... Um... There's also a special version for Sub-Zero called Slalom. It's self-explanatory. Missing the goals along the way, however, will lead you to literally explode and die. <laughs> Alright, enough with the dying. Let's talk about something more... fruity. Fruit Splat. It's the best game mode in the game, hands down, if only because of the goofy music. You gotta splat as much fruit as you can before reaching the goal. No deaths, no explosions, just wasting some perfectly nice, juicy fruits. Ooh. I don't know if it's a me thing, but... Do you ever get the feeling that some of the birds look like candy? Like, the blue birds, they look like blueberries. This little fellow over here looks like an orange. And this guy, oh, I don't know. He, he kind of looks like a kiwi. Oh, oh right, a championship chase. This is the meat and bones of the game, the bee's knees. You gotta buckle the hell down, as everything you've learned throughout your time in the normal levels will be put to the test, as you compete against birds that will <coughs> fuck you over. <laughs> in Super Mario Kart, the AI is infamous for being able to use exclusive and random items. Like, for example, with the Mario Brothers. They're able to use stars at will. Yeah, it's unfair, but it keeps you, the player, paying attention at all times. It adds tension to the race. Then there's the yellow bird who does whatever the hell this is. These boss battles are genuinely stupid. Like with Chuck, he literally goes faster than Sonic, yet he leaves tires on the track so that you can catch up? Ugh. Bomb becomes an infinite TNT supply machine. Hal can literally start tornadoes at will. Side note, Hal looks freaking ugly in this game. Like, why can't they just stick with the old cute... <sighs> Never mind. King Pig literally has a cheat button where he can fly over the track, yet he doesn't take advantage of it? Generally, the boss battles are you trying to stay in front of the enemy at all costs. Unless it's Chuck, then you're screwed. When you eventually beat the characters, they join your party, but not before you see a special cutscene. You just have to love the cutscenes because the characters go from, grr, I'm so evil, I'm bad, grr, and when you kill them, it's like, oh, 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 oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I'm a good guy now, I, this is amazing. Not for Terrence though, he causes a traffic jam because he needs to assert his dominance. He's just built different. <laughs> Ooh, the birds were genuinely one of the coolest parts of the game for me. If only because they had power-ups. <laughs> Every bird you encounter will have one that affects the competition in some way. Speed, attack, defense, you know, the whole jazz. It's actually a good alternative to the Mario Kart item system, now that I think about it, as it gives an incentive to use all the characters. Hey, I just want an excuse to nerd out about this stuff. I really like how the Bluebirds have three mini speed boosts that the player can activate at will. Hmm. Terrence can literally use the lightning bolt from Mario Kart against the people around him. He fucking cheated! Fuck. 
and Chunk the Yellow Bird literally breaks space and time to go fast. He's the most broken character in the game by far. I don't know why Chuck needs to be so broken, but ever since he became a Thanos cosplayer, I, I just can't judge anyone anymore. <laughs> Speaking of which, Ayrton Senna. He was a famous Formula 1 racer who is widely beloved due to his talent, especially in his home country, Brazil. Unfortunately, during the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix, his life was cut short due to hitting a wall at more than 300 kilometers per hour. It was extremely tragic, as his talent in the racing world would be greatly missed, as he died young. Many tributes would be made to him over the decades, and in 2016, Rovio would accidentally create an immortality machine. Oh no. Even though he's a reskin of Chuck, it's nice to know that Rovio would do a little tribute to a racing legend. Even though the 3D model for Aaron Senna looks like this. I'm going to be real with you, this game is stupid. But people genuinely loved the game for what it was. So of course, Rovio did the Rovio and made like 82,000 toys for Angry Birds Go. There was a time back in the mid-2010s where the Toys to Life craze was on the rage. Most people would point to Nintendo's Amiibo, or whatever those idiot Skylanders things were. But for me, oh yeah, it's going to be the Telepods. And they're probably better than Amiibo too. These little toys first debuted for Angry Birds Star Wars 2 in 2014, but I believe they shine brightest in Angry Birds Go. How these toys would work is that they would have an NFC or a QR code on the base of the figure, where next, you would put it on top of a reader, like for example, the Wii U gamepad, and then the unbelievable happens. The figure appears in your video game. Once we put the portal on the Switch... Oh, no way! No way! It's the portal! Look at that, it's the Donald it, Control! No way, it's parallel! It's like the toy is coming to life. I have a ton of Angry Birds Go telepods from when I was younger, and I loved playing with them. The telepods were designed to be toys alongside collectible figures, while amiibo were basically made to be statues that collected dust. I think there was this one playset that resembled a drag strip that I got for my birthday back in 2015, and I believe you could use the telepods in them. Listen, I love my gold Mario as much as the next guy, but I have the feeling to keep my eye on him to make sure his paint doesn't chip, while with the telepods, I can put them in mud and they'd still work for all I care. In game, you'd be able to own exclusive cards that give you the Oh yeah, my, I begged my dad to buy me this toy, and now I'm super awesome. Shtick. Unrelated, but Hal's cart is called the Shoomerang. Ooh, like a... <sighs> yeah. Everything went well for what was likely to be the greatest racing mobile game ever made. But sadly, the first horseman of the apocalypse came. The Curse of the 2.0 Oh dear goodness, my child! What have they done to you? 2016 did this to you! I, this is unforgivable. <laughs> Version 2.0 was a major update released in June 2016 that quite literally changed everything. I never said it in a good way. Rovia woke up one day and decided, hey, Let's become stupid. The UI, the mechanics, the progression, it's almost unrecognizable. I remember returning to the game after hiatus when the update was released, and my soul was crushed. My save data in progress was gone. Yeah, from zero, gone. I mean, it's very likely a 11-year-old Suwaka was ignorant issue, but that disappointment also affected other people who loved the game for more valid reasons. Originally, you just have to earn coins to upgrade your carts. 
But now, you gotta earn specific parts for your specific vehicle in order to make them faster. We in the business call this the PGR weapon model. It made the game more grindy and, dare I say it, like a gotcha game. A lot of the old charm was gone, like the character select menu was originally a tall tree where the birds and pigs had comfortable homes that fit their style. Oddly adorable now that I think about it. Now it's just a generic gradient background that resembles something more like Fortnite more than anything else. Rovio now implemented an energy system that essentially limits your playtime per day. Or, you know, you can always spend a little extra money on getting more playtime. Which, dare I say it, it's is like, like a gotcha, gotcha game. game. The story and cutscenes, gone. Who cares? You're just playing because... you're playing. Mechanic Nitori Pig? Gone. Jenga? Gone. And worst of all, Ayrton Senna? Gone. For good. In the late 2010s, mobile games had been moving in a direction to where they would essentially become nothing more than glorified money sinks. And Angry Birds Go was likely the worst victim I can think of. Because at least for other mobile games, they're forgettable slop. But for Angry Birds Go, it used to be... Not great, but it had character. That's why a lot of people miss the old Angry Birds games. Yeah, there are new ones on the App Store, but who cares? They're weird. In the year 2019, practically all of the Angry Birds games that mattered were removed off the Google Play and App Store due to them being old and unprofitable which in my head, marked the end of the golden age of Angry Birds. I tried to play the old Angry Birds Go for old time's sake, but I had to deal with Cydia, old iOS, incompatibility, it's all a giant pain in the ass. But I can probably make a good guess that this game hasn't aged well, if only because of the glitch videos. <laughs> I remember when Mario Kart Tour came out, and the disappointment surrounding it, because, say it with me kids, it, it was, was a gotcha, gotcha game. game. Like, a full-blown gotcha game that took years to become bearable, and it's already on life support. Thanks Nintendo, what a great birthday gift. It is of my opinion that, if Angry Birds Go and Mario Kart Tour existed today at the same time, I would say Angry Birds Go would be the higher rated game just because of how stupid it is. I mean, there was so much potential here that was just... Have you ever heard of the saying that, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Rovio didn't reinvent the wheel with version 2.0. No, 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 no. They created a tire that had spikes on the bottom that pops the tire whenever it moves. Sooner or later, you're going to crash. Womp womp. There are very few kart racers that can capture the prestige and reputation of Mario Kart, and I can certainly tell you that Mario Kart Tour did not. Because Angry Birds Go did. Not because of its polish, but because of how stupid it was. However, in its absence, there is an empty space for a goofy kart racer that I truly hope some developer will take advantage of, as I think people are desperate for, frankly, any decent mobile game nowadays. The question is, who will be the first to do it? What do you say, Nintendo? Ooh. Listen to you two, you might have ruined my life, but at the very least, you can't be as worse as those guys. I don't even know what happened to you two. Like, you had all the money, you had the yearly games, you had all the power in the world, and you blew it. You blew it. I, I, I don't even know how you did it. Like, now, no one remembers you, you're now a laughing stock, um, you, you spy on children, and worst of all... Angry Birds Fellows.